Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I'm going to talk about GANs. So let us take a look at the agenda for this session. First, I will talk about generative models and then I will discuss generative adversarial networks including how it works and the need of it and the advantages as well. Moving further, I will tell you a few challenges faced by GANs and finally to sum up this session, I will discuss a few applications of generative adversarial networks. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. Also, check out Edureka's certification program. The link is given in the description box below. Now, without wasting any more time, let us understand what are GANs. So, we are going to start with generative models. So, generative models are nothing but those models that use an unsupervised learning approach. In a generative model, there are samples in the data that is input variables x, but it lacks the output variable y. And we use the only input variables to train the generative model and it recognizes patterns from the input variables to generate an output that is unknown and based on the training data only. In supervised learning, we are more aligned towards creating predictive models from the input variables. And this type of modeling is also known as discriminative modeling. And in a classification problem, the model has to discriminate as to which class the example belongs to. And on the other hand, unsupervised models are used to create or generate new examples in the input distribution. To define a generative model in layman terms, we can say generative models are able to generate new examples from the sample that are not only similar to the examples but are indistinguishable as well. And the most common example of a generative model is a naive bias classifier, which is more often used as a discriminative model. Other examples of generative models include Gaussian mixture model and a rather modern example that is generative adversarial networks. So let us try to understand what exactly are GANs or generative adversarial networks. Generative adversarial networks or GANs are a deep learning based generative model that is used for unsupervised learning. It is basically a system where two competing neural networks compete with each other to create or generate variations in the data. It was first described in a paper in 2014 by Ian Goodfellow and a standardized and much stable model theory was proposed by Alec Radford in 2016, which is also known as DGCAN, also known as DCGAN, or we can call it as Deep Convolutional General Adversarial Networks. And most of the GANs today use Deep Convolutional General Adversarial Networks. The GANs architecture consists of two submodels known as the generator model and the discriminator model. So a generator network takes a sample and generates a sample of data. A discriminator network decides whether the data is generated or taken from the real sample using a binary classification problem with the help of a sigmoid function that gives the output in the form or the range 0 and 1. So let us go ahead and take a look at how GANs actually work. To understand how GANs work, let's break it down. So generative means that the model follows the unsupervised learning approach and is a generative model. When we talk about adversarial, the model is trained in an adversarial setting. And network simply means for the training of the model, we use the neural networks as artificial intelligence algorithms. In GANs, there is a generator network that takes a sample and generates a sample of data. And after this, the discriminator network decides whether the data is generated or taken from the real sample using a binary classification problem with the help of a sigmoid function that gives the output in the range 0 to 1. The generative model analyzes the distribution of the data in such a way that after the training phase, the probability of the discriminator making a mistake maximizes. And the discriminator, on the other hand, is based on a model that will estimate the probability that the sample is coming from the real data or not the generator. The whole process can be formalized in a mathematical formula. So G over here is generator, D is equal to discriminator, P data X is the distribution of real data, P data Z is the distributor of generator, X is the sample from the real data, and Z is the sample from generator. 
where dx is the discriminator network and gz is a generator network so let's take a look at the flowchart once again guys so we have the training data which is going to give the real sample and the generator network is going to generate the sample from the random noise or the examples and then it will go to the discriminator network where it's going to check if the sample that is coming is real or fake so that is how a GAN actually works. Now let's take a look at the training phase, like how a generative adversarial network is actually trained. So it happens in two phases, guys. So the first phase is where we train the discriminator and we actually freeze the generator, which means that the training set for the generator is turned false and the network will only do the forward pass and there will not be any back propagation. Basically, the discriminator is trained with real data and checks if it can predict them correctly and the same with the fake data to identify them as fake after this there is the second part where we train the generator and freeze the discriminator so we get the result from the first phase and we use them to make better from the previous state to try and fool the discriminator better so to understand this in the layman's term i'm gonna tell you a few steps for training like how you should start so the first step is you have to define the problem you have got to define the problem and collect the data after this the second step is you have to choose the architecture of gan so in this step depending on your problem you have to choose how your gan should look like the third step is training the discriminator on real data so we train the discriminator with real data to predict them as real for n number of times so we call it epochs as well and then we generate the fake inputs from the generator so in this step we are going to generate the fake samples from the generator and the next step is we train the discriminator on fake data so whatever samples are generated from the generator network you're going to train the discriminator to predict the generated data as fake so that's how we know that discriminator is actually predicting the values as correctly and the last step is we train the generated with the output of discriminator so after getting the discriminator predictions we train the generator to fool the discriminator so that's how we train the gan to actually get our solution from the problem which is like defining the problem so you'll understand this when i'm talking about the applications guys so no worry now let's go ahead and take a look at a few challenges of generative adversarial networks so the concept of gans is rather fascinating but there are a lot of setbacks that can cause a lot of hindrance in its path some of the major challenges faced by GANs are the first one is the stability. So there has to be a stability that is required between discriminator and the generator network. Otherwise, the whole network would just fall. For example, in case, let's say if the discriminator is too powerful, the generator will fail to train altogether. It won't be able to push fake samples to the discriminator and it will always identify them as fake. And let's say if the network is too lenient, the discriminator network is too lenient so any image that would be generated by the generator network would make the network useless the next challenge that is faced by gans is gans fail miserably in determining the positioning of the objects in terms of how many times the object should occur at that location suppose we have a image in which we have let's say three dogs with two eyes and sometimes a gan will fail to you know determine the positioning of the objects in terms of it will generate an image with like one dog and six eyes so that's kind of a problem that we face while working on gans and the next challenge is 3d perspective troubles gans as it is not able to understand the perspective also so it will often give a flat image for a 3d object so that's one challenge that we face with gans as well and gans have a problem of understanding the global objects and it cannot differentiate or understand a holistic structure if you are talking about trees or if you are talking about flowers that's a problem the gans will follow and last but not least newer types of gans are more advanced that i've talked about that is deep convolutional generative adversarial networks and are expected to overcome these shortcomings altogether so we don't have to worry about these these are the shortcomings that we face with normal gans the initial generative adversarial networks now that they have become more advanced they actually overcome these shortcomings so you don't have to worry guys so last but not the least i want to talk about a few applications of generative adversarial networks so the first one is prediction of next frame in a video so let's say the prediction of future events in a video frame is made possible with the help of gans 
and DVD GAN or we can call it as dual video discriminator GAN can generate a 256 by 256 videos of notable fidelity up to 48 frames in length and this can be used for various purposes including surveillance in which we can determine the activities in a frame that gets distorted due to other factors like rain dust smoke etc so the possibilities are immense with this if you are able to predict the next frame in a video that actually helps in a lot of things like surveillance security and we can predict outcomes based on these frames that we generate from a video after this comes the text to image generation so basically object driven attentive GAN which is also known as object GAN performs the text to image synthesis in two steps so the first step is generating the semantic layout and then generating the image by synthesizing the image by using a deconvolutional image generator is the final step so this could be used intensively to generate images by understanding the captions the layouts and refine details by synthesizing the words and there is another study about the story gans that can synthesize the whole storyboards from mere paragraphs so that's actually a very good idea if you're talking about gans so you can just give a few layouts and captions based on that it will generate an image for us talking about the next application we have image to image translation so pix to pix is a model which is designed for general purpose image to image translation so let's say we have three images we have a real image then we'll be having a generated image which is basically a fake and then it will be reconstructed to the previous image which was real so this is our image to image translation work guys and after this we have enhancing the resolution of an image so super resolution generative adversarial network or also known as sr gan is a gan which can generate the super resolution images from low resolution images with finer details and better quality so this is actually a very good application of gans guys the applications can be immense so you imagine a higher quality image with finer details generated from a low resolution image the amount of help it would produce to identify details in low resolution images can be used for wider purposes including surveillance we can use it for documentation security we can use it for detecting patterns etc and last but not least we have interactive image generation so gans can be used to generate interactive images as well and computer science and artificial intelligence library also known as csail has developed a gan that can generate 3d models with realistic lighting and reflections enabled by the shape and texture editing and more recently researchers have come up with a model that can synthesize a reenacted face animated by a person's movement while preserving the appearance of the face at the same time there are a lot more applications we can work on so this brings us to the end of this session guys where we have learned what are gans how it works and what are the challenges faced by gans including the applications of generative adversarial networks so in the end of the session i just want to tell you guys don't forget to subscribe to edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on edureka also check out edureka's certification program the link is given in the description box below happy learning thank you i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning